What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about quadratic inequalities. Finding where values are greater than or less than zero. So let's get to it. A quadratic inequality is when you are considering either a quadratic being greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero or you could even write these with less than and less than or equal to zeros. It doesn't really matter which way you're going with this, uh, whether it's less than or greater than, it's all gonna work essentially the same way. So for example, uh, let's take a look at uh, this red one right here. If we wanted to find where is ax squared plus bx plus c greater than zero, then we would wanna look at this space right here because we're really looking at where are, what x values, we're looking at what x values in here will produce a result that is greater than zero. So if we're considering our x-intercepts, all of the x values that go out this way are gonna to correspond to a value that's going to be greater than zero when we substitute in those x values. And similarly, for this, for this red one, if we look at x values going out this way, these will also produce a result that is greater than zero. Or if we want to say where is ax squared plus bx plus c less than zero, then we'd be looking down here in this space. And this is really going to work the same way for this blue uh, quadratic. We're, when we're looking at where is this thing greater than zero, we're looking for what x values produce a y value that's greater than zero. So we're really looking at this space again, or if we're looking at where is it less than zero, we're again going to be looking at down here for these two parts or off to infinity. Now you might be asking what about the equals to if it's, if it's equal to zero? Well, you know, that's just the symbol with the, the equal sign there. And that just means, are we going to actually include these x-intercepts in our solutions? So when we end up coming up with a solution, we're going to create a whole range or a whole domain or a whole set of solutions that go with this inequality to show that these are the values that are going to make this statement true. So the, the equals value, the, when we put the equal sign underneath there, that's really just saying, are we going to include it or are we not going to include it? Let's look at a couple examples and put this into action. So here we have our first example. Find the values for x where 2x squared minus 5x is greater than 3. Use a sign diagram to help you out. What's a sign diagram? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look. Really what we're trying to do is, when, if you noticed up at the beginning, all of these things were when this is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, or less than or less than or equal to zero. So what we're going to do is just like when you're working with your quadratic formula, we're gonna get the whole thing equal to zero. That's gonna make our lives a lot easier for our overall analysis. Let's start by subtracting three and bringing it over to this side of the inequality. 2x squared minus 5x minus three is greater than zero. Now, we could start by trying to solve this as an inequality, but really when we think of quadratics, we tend to think of how do we find the solutions? How do we find where this thing crosses the x-axis? And when we do that, we're always thinking, what happens when this quadratic equals zero? So we're gonna do that very thing. We're gonna change our inequality momentarily to an equal sign so we can solve this in a way that we're used to, and then we'll come back and apply the inequality piece after that. So we're gonna make this into an, e an equation. And you could at this point either go right to the quadratic formula, but I always like to factor because for me, factoring is a little bit easier than trying to put together all these numbers for the quadratic formula. If you prefer the quadratic formula, go for it. Maybe you could even pause it, try the quadratic formula, see if you match up with what I come up with here. So I'm looking at the factors of two and negative three that's gonna be negative six and that add up to negative five. Uh, that's gonna be negative two and negative and positive. No, 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 no. That's not gonna be negative two and positive three. That's going to be negative, uh, positive one and negative six because when I add these two things together, I need to get this negative. I thought at first I was thinking positive or negative three, but then when I added, when I multiplied those, I would get a positive six. So I needed to change to this one. So I'm gonna have two x squared 
plus 1x minus 6x minus 3 equals 0. The only thing that I have common here is x. So x gets pulled out and I'm left with 2x plus 1. The thing that's common here is negative 3. And I'm going to be left with 2x plus 1. So that, and that's all going to be equal to 0. So I'm left with x minus 3 times 2x plus 1. And that's going to all equal 0. So now we find out using the null factor law, where are these things equal to zero? We know that this is gonna be x equals three, or that x is going to equal a negative one half. So this is now where we move to using the sine diagram. The sine diagram is basically a horizontal line where we put the zeros of our function, the roots of our function, the, the, uh, the solutions, the x-intercepts of our quadratic. So we're going to put negative one-half here, and we're going to put a positive three over here. So this is representing the x values. So these are x values here, and up here, this is representing the inequality, or what I'll call f of x. I'm going to be picking different x values within these uh, sections to see do I get a positive value or do I get a negative value? And the reason I'm checking this is because when we look at this here, if, if I'm looking at these zeros right here, all of these values in between these two zeros would be positive. All of these values out here would be negative. So I need to determine, uh, am I looking at a quadratic that looks like this or a quadratic that looks like this? Now, with all the work that you've done with quadratics, you might already know the solution for this, or you might already know that inequality, but let's take a look and complete the sine diagram to see uh, to see if it matches what your intuition says. So I'm gonna pick an x value. I'm gonna start in between here. So I'm gonna take an x value and I'm gonna drop it into my inequality, or actually even, it might be easier to drop it into my factored form right here. So I'm gonna pick a value of zero. Well, actually, no, that one's gonna be actually easier to put up here. So if I put zero into this, I've got two times zero, which is zero, minus five, x, uh, minus five times zero, which leaves me with a negative number right there, a negative three. So I just chose zero, but I could have picked anything in between negative one and three. Not negative one and three, because we know those equal zero, but what I'm, what I'm choosing is I could choose one, uh, uh, um, one half, two, any number in between there, and I will end up with a negative result. And similarly, if I choose something outside these boundaries, I should come up with a positive result. So I'm going to choose a value, again, a, a number that's easy to work with mentally, I'm going to choose negative 1. So if I put negative 1 in down here, negative x, so the x value is now negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is minus 4, so there's a negative right there. 2 times negative 1 is a negative plus one, so negative two plus one, that's gonna be a negative. So a negative times a negative is going to be a positive result. And finally, if I pick another number, maybe I pick 10. 10 minus three is seven, that's gonna be positive. 20 plus one is going to be positive, so I'm left with a positive result out here. So when x is less than negative one half uh, and when x is greater than three, this function will be greater than zero, or, or this function will be greater than three. So what we've done is we've taken our original problem, two x squared minus five x being greater than three, and we moved three over and we created an, an equivalent inequality. That sounds kind of like an oxymoron that you can't have something that's an equivalent and an inequality. But we've made a new function, a new equation, where the x values would be exactly the same for the, 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 the function when it is equal to or greater than zero as it would be if we were looking at 2x squared minus 5x equaling 3. I went to my friend uh, Desmos.com and we did a, I did a graph there. So let's take a look and see what I mean by this. So here we've got our two functions. We've got the red one, which is the equivalent to this piece right here, right? 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So here's 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, and we've got our nice quadratic 
equation right here, and we can see that it's crossing at negative 0.5 and at 3. Now our original statement was 2x squared minus 5x equals 3, or is greater than 3, right? 2x squared minus 5x is greater than 3. And when we move this 3 over, we created this new, in, this new equation or this new inequality which matches up with this red one. But how does that line up with our original green and blue function with, with this thing equaling or being greater than 3? Well, if you notice, look where these things cross right here. They cross at x equals negative 1 half, or uh, yeah, negative half, and they cross at x equals 3. So by doing that, what we've done is we've still found the x values that correspond to where the y values are bigger than 3 or bigger than 0 or where they are less than 3 or less than 0. The same x values are going to be greater than 3 right here. That would be greater than this x-axis right here. The x values are the same. Now the y values are going to be different, but we don't care about the y values. All we're trying to determine is what values of x will produce positive results or numbers greater than 3 or numbers greater than 0 when we rearrange it a little bit. So I hope that helps clarify why this is the way that it is and why, why we can use in it, this inequality and still have it work for this uh, inequality right there. Um, let's go to another example, and this example says find the values for x where this quadratic is less than this linear equation. And we'll find out what happens with that in the next video. So if this was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up, like the video, help spread this amongst the YouTube algorithm so it reaches more people, and I'll see you in the next video.